Hi, I'm Richard Braithwaite. I'm married to Rita Braithwaite. We've been attending Eagle Nazarene the last eight years. I've lived in the Valley my whole life, and uh, currently I've been playing softball with our sons in Meridian City League softball, and I belong to the tennis club at Boise Racket and Swim Club, and I'm actually assistant coach this year for Rocky Mountain Tennis Team. A King Alcohol captured me first year of college at 19 years old. And I ran with that for 29 years, believe it or not. Everybody I hung with in the sports world, entertainment world, drank. I thought it was the norm. And it wasn't until the last eight years that I was really a functioning alcoholic and uh, it brought me down to my knees until my last bottom 13 years ago. But the reason I drank was, uh, you know, I was raised that you never ask for help. You always can figure things out on your own. And uh, when you couldn't, alcohol took a little bit of the pain away, but it always came back the next day. I'd say there's probably four or five stages in my life that my alcoholism progressed. And that was the first one was losing my daughter dying in my arms. I had to drink over it. It, it, it kicked me up another level. I lost my brother in my arms. Uh, I lost, a, I found a best friend dead in his home. Um, you know, those are three things. Uh, my first divorce uh, escalated my drinking. It, it catches you and you can't think you can go without it. And so it got to the point where I had to wake up and have a drink in the morning just to shave. I knew who God was, but I never reached out to him. I always did the foxhole prayer like, God, please get me out of this one. I promise I won't do that again. But it wasn't until my bottom 13 years ago when I got busted up, had 11 broken bones, and got taken by someone and put into an abandoned schoolhouse for eight days that I hit my bottom of bottom. In that fourth day of being in that schoolhouse, uh, I got down on my knees and knew that I was probably going to die from the pain. And I sincerely ask God, I go, God, if you're really there, I know I'm probably not going to make it here. No one knows where I'm at. And uh, I go, if you could just take the pain away from me, I would just, that would be enough. I can't even tell you if it was a half hour, hour later, but the brightest light came over me. And the most incredible experience happened to me. It was like the pain was being carved away from 11 different injuries I had on my body, and I felt like a million dollars. And I just go, oh my gosh, there is something out there. And I just kept that peace. It was a peace I will never forget. Probably another hour later, I, got, I said to God, I said, God, do that again. If you do that again I, and I get out of this mess, I promise I will tell everybody about you. And again, I, it was probably an hour, two hours later, I was laying there and the same experience happened again. And it was just overwhelming. And I'll tell you, the pain had left me for 24 hours and it gave me enough hope to hang on. Three days later, I got rescued. When I got out, I went to my folks' house and healed up for two more weeks. And then I stepped into a Nazarene church of all churches and told my story. And I've been on this journey now for 13 years and I've kept my promise to God. The grace of God, it's a miracle I'm alive today, but God has put uh, the right people in my life at the right time. Uh, I never was one to make decisions on my own. They never came out right. So I've learned to ask for help with our small groups, which is probably the, the biggest, uh, thing I could promote to people is get into a small group so that you have a accountability partners and uh, any decision, any hardship that you go in life that you run it by one another because in a small group we pray over each other. And I love it when people call me and say, can you pray for me? And I might be driving or I might pull over and I pray for them right on the spot. And I just love it when people reach out because uh, I've learned to reach out for everything now. I don't do anything, even lifting anything, without asking someone to help me. I'm Richard. I'm made for more. <laughs>